Can you imagine what it would be like to wake up Monday morning excited for work? It's possible. Finding your dream job means finding the right job at the right company based on what's right for your life. Ramit Sethi, New York Times bestselling author, has helped thousands of people find their dream jobs, and I want to show you how you can do it too. Get answers to some of today's hardest career questions. What's changed in the global pandemic? How do you use this time to renegotiate and even work remotely permanently? Are you in the right job at the right company for you? Based on your current career goals and life needs, most people aren't. It's hard to find out how the most successful careers are actually built unless you have an inside scoop. Find Your Dream Job is Ramit's program that teaches people how to find and land the job of their dreams, as well as negotiate for more pay and great perks like remote work. Proven over 10 years with thousands of students, Find Your Dream Job is a comprehensive system that works no matter what your career goals are. Want to make more money, change industries, work from home, get a promotion or improve your work-life balance? Find Your Dream Job will show you exactly how to do it. Sign up for more information at iwt.com/podcastdj. Can you imagine what it would be like to wake up Monday morning excited for work? It's possible. Finding your dream job means finding the right job at the right company based on what's right for your life. Ramit Sethi, New York Times best-selling author, has helped thousands of people find their dream jobs, and I want to show you how you can do it too. Get answers to some of today's hardest career questions. What's changed in the global pandemic? How do you use this time to renegotiate and even work remotely permanently? Are you in the right job at the right company for you? Based on your current career goals and life needs, most people aren't. It's hard to find out how the most successful careers are actually built unless you have an inside scoop. Find Your Dream Job is Ramit's program that teaches people how to find and land the job of their dreams, as well as negotiate for more pay and great perks like remote work. Proven over 10 years with thousands of students, Find Your Dream Job is a comprehensive system that works no matter what your career goals are. Want to make more money, change industries, work from home, get a promotion or improve your work-life balance? Find Your Dream Job will show you exactly how to do it. Sign up for more information at iwt.com/podcastdj. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. We're going to jump back into the Finson files, and we're going to talk about the British Virgin Islands and the fact that the British Virgin Islands is one of the most notorious places for people to set up these kinds of shell companies, for them to try and fly under the radar, and for all sorts of of scummy folks like drug traffickers, sex traffickers, world despots, etc., etc., use the British Virgin Islands and places like it to hide their money and to continue on with the great wide world of money laundering. And the British Virgin Islands is like the U.S. Virgin Islands in that regard, right? A little bit more of a notorious spot, but again, the same rules apply. And that's how it is at most of these uh, tax haven type spots. Things are a lot less tight, shall we say, when it comes to regulation and when it comes to the government going after people. You know, a couple of palms get greased, a little bit of money gets spread around, and before you know it, well, you have a well-oiled machine. And that's what we see down in the British Virgin Islands. It is a den of money laundering and financial douchebaggery. So, we have an article this morning from the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. The author of this article is Will Fitzgibbon. Headline, Notorious Tax Haven British Virgin Islands to Introduce Public Register of Company Owners. The territory's secrecy rules have long attracted criminals and secretive companies created created there have featured in several ICIJ investigations on offshore finance. Now, it is a fact that the British Virgin Islands is a, 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 a destination that is preferred by people who are trying to launder money, by people who are trying to hide money. And now, as we've been investigating Jeffrey Epstein and the characters that we see on the Jeffrey Epstein stage, 
How many of those people that we talk about on a regular basis, how many of them do you think have stashed their money in places like the British Virgin Islands? I would say 98% of them, and that's being conservative. If there's a way for these people to hide money and not have to pay it out, you know that's what they're going to do. That's what drives them. That's what motivates them. That's what gets all of this nonsense kicked into gear. Greed, folks. It comes down to greed. The British Virgin Islands, a popular tax haven where secrecy rules have long attracted criminals, will introduce a public register of owners of companies created on the island. And I think that's a good idea, right? Look, there has to be some sort of oversight. We're we're talking about international funds, international corporations that are using these sort of um, spots like in the U.S. Virgin Islands to launder money, to hide money, to stash money, and to fund all sorts of crazy criminalistic crimes. So it's a good thing, in my opinion, that we're getting a register of owners of companies. You know, you go to any, you look up just about any company that's functioning in a actual capacity as a company and you can find the people who are who are in charge they have a website etc etc these companies their only purpose of existence is a way to wash this money and to not have to pay taxes that's exactly what it is let's just call a spade a spade the bvi an overseas territory of the united kingdom located east of puerto rico has a well-documented history of being misused by drug traffickers, corrupt politicians, and tax evaders. You know, when you're watching like movies and stuff and they're talking about offshore accounts, the Cayman Islands, and this is what they're talking about, places like this. So it's not just like a myth or anything like that. When you have the kind of money that these people have, they operate in a different manner than us. They're able to move in a different way than we can move. And they are able to utilize the loopholes and all of the backroom dealing. Successive scandals, including exposés by the International Consortium of, of Investigative Journalists, have placed the BVI under pressure to increase transparency. It's, yeah, it's a good thing to have some transparency here, especially when we're talking about these kinds of companies. They can't operate in secrecy. If that occurs, then you have things like the Jeffrey Epstein crime enterprise. You have the sex trafficking ring, and it's all operated on laundered money, dirty money, money that has been washed. And that could never occur without offshore destinations such as this. Andrew Fahey, BVI's Premier and Minister of Finance, told the island's House of Assembly in September that his government would work towards a publicly accessible register of beneficial ownership for companies. A bit subject to reservations. Ah, always a caveat, huh? Always the check the small print. So again, we're probably getting lip service. There probably aren't there probably probably isn't going to be any sort of database that we can access and see who owns these companies. And this is probably just to assuage and to massage people's feelings in his own state and people in Congress or whatever you call it in the British Virgin Islands. Words are wind, right? And the same goes for Sherrod Brown here in America that we were just talking about in our Finson discussions. It's oh, it's it's one thing to have a bunch of a bunch of whinging going on. It's it's you know it's one thing to talk the talk, but are they going to walk the walk? That's what it comes down to. How many scumbags have given us lip service about fixing things like this, and nothing ever gets fixed? Instead, we just get the same story over and over told a different way. But it's always the same ending for us, right? As citizens and normal folk, we get shit on and they continue to live their fantastic life on the backs of the rest of us. Liz Sugg, the UK minister with responsibility for territories like the BVI, later tweeted that the public register would be adopted by 2023. So, it, again, 
we'll have to see, right, what what it's going to entail. And 2023 is a long time away. But I understand that it takes time to get things kicked into gear. I don't know what sort of budget or what sort of financial position the BVI is in to enact things like this. I'm certainly not an expert on local politics in the BVI. But what I will tell you is it certainly is a preferred destination for all sorts of scumbaggery when it comes to financial crimes. So the BVI would be doing themselves a big favor by taking it seriously and trying to make sure that there is as much transparency as possible. Every time that there is a global expose on illicit finance, the BVI's name comes up, said Ava Lee, anti-corruption campaign leader from the nonprofit Global Witness. Of course, all the way back, every, every single one of the drops that we've been through, every single one of the drops that has come out, the BVI has played a huge part. The recent leak of files from FinCEN show that at least 20% of the occasions when banks in the U.S. raised suspicions of money laundering involved BVI companies, and half of the companies exposed by the Panama Papers were registered there. So you see, again, it all comes back to these great drops, these leaks by these journalists, the Panama Papers, uh, the Paradise Papers, all of this stuff that came before the FinCEN files, all of these drops are super important. And I think we're going to get into the Panama Papers at some point. If if we get some time when, it's, when the news is slow and we can go over some of the stuff that ties into our case, I'm going to dip into that as well because I believe that it's relevant, again, to our larger discussion as a whole. You can't come into a case like the Jeffrey Epstein case and only look at one aspect of it. It is wide ranging. It is large in scope. And there are so many different levels to it that we have to make sure that we're doing our best to have as much context available as possible. And I believe, in my opinion anyway, and from the feedback I have received from the listeners, that the the FinCEN files and this financial route that we're, we're going on, this thread that we're pulling on, is a a very um, important piece of the story. So we're definitely definitely going to keep on top of, of, of this, right? And we're going to check out the Panama Papers, I think, at some point, too. There is currently no simple way for members of the public, journalists, or lawyers to identify a BVI's company's owner. Knowing a company's owner can be key to determining whether laws have been broken and help trace money, homes, or other assets in a divorce or other dispute. Well, look, and that's all the truth, right? But from where I'm sitting, if all of my finances are there for them to see, then why in the hell should these scumbag bipedal serpents be able to stash their dough, not pay taxes, and avoid any sort of scrutiny for how they made their money? They shouldn't be allowed to do that. There needs to be transparency. There needs to be a way to trace who is in charge at these companies because at the end of the day, somebody must be held accountable if shit goes wrong. Countries and law enforcement can officially request information from the BVI. However... Not all countries can make such a request, and even if they can, information can take significant time to arrive. Oh, of course it can. You gotta muddy the waters, right? Slow it down. Drag your feet there, John. Make sure nobody can get this information until we have time to burn all of the the evidence. And you see it all the time with these kinds of cases, with this sort of thing. It there's no communication and the the agencies that are supposed to be working together are always too busy trying to one up each other or take uh, credit for the bust or for whatever it may be. And it's just the same old tired, played out bullshit song. BVI and secretive companies created there have played an outsized role in major ICIJ investigations since 2014. 
In 2014, reporters identified the oldest daughter of the late Philippine dictator, Ferdinand Marcos, as a beneficiary of a BVI trust as part of the offshore leaks investigation. So, we all know who Ferdinand Macros is, right? And, uh, you know, his daughter had herself a nice little trust fund set up at the 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 cost to the Filipino people, I'm sure. And his daughter was, you know, living the high life. And nobody had any idea. It was an untraceable company. If there was nothing wrong with it and they weren't trying to hide it, why are you putting uh, uh, your, your trust in the, the Virgin Islands, the British Virgin Islands? Just do it out of your own country, out of your own bank and be done with it. If not, my question is, what are you trying to hide? Officials later said that they would examine whether assets assets exposed by ICIJ were part of the estimated $5 billion her father amassed through corruption. Nah, I'm sure all of it was made through legitimate means. I'm sure her father just made a, a whole bunch of money in the in the business world. So that's why he was involved in all of the graft as well and all of the stealing. Come on. Let's be real. These people... These dictators, these these rulers in these countries and these senators, they all act like they're in, in organized crime. They all conduct themselves like they're mafioso. So let's treat them like mafioso when they get caught. ICIJ also revealed BVI companies owned by the sons of a former South Korean president embroiled in a tax evasion scandal and of China's former ruler, Wen Jaibo. It, and the list just goes on. And I bet you if you uh, you look for all of these people we talk about, Wen Jai Bo, um, the, the daughter here, they all have these sorts of connections. All of these people, all of these members of so-called polite society operate in the same manner. They have one face for you to see in public, and then when the lights are off and they don't think anyone's watching and they're amongst their own kind, fellow travelers, well... The demonic face comes out. The 2015 Swiss Leaks investigation revealed that HSBC Private Bank in Switzerland helped customers set up shell companies in BVI to skirt a new tax law. Of course they did. You and I, we better pay every last dollar of our taxes and forget you if something goes wrong. There's no safety net for you, as we've seen. To hell with you. But if you're rich, come on, come on over here to the British Virgin Islands. We're going to set you up with this nice little tax uh, a tax evasion scam. And hell, we'll even show you how to do it. This is a bank, folks, all right? Scumbag banksters. Many of those with secretive Swiss bank accounts protected their identity further by using the bank account under the name of a BVI company instead of, of in their own name, ICIJ Revealed. And that's how they, this has been going on forever. That's how these people operate. It is the, it, literally, when I say it is the lifeblood of the underworld, I am not kidding you. Money laundering is so important to these people. And without these front companies, without these tax shelters, and without them being able to evade taxes, evade scrutiny, and without there being any sort of oversight, These sort of operations are going to continue. That's why it is so important for the prosecutors in the Jeffrey Epstein case to to pursue the financial aspect of this because it will blow the doors wide open, folks. And with the upheaval we're having in America right now, politically, and with how things are changing so rapidly, I'll tell you what, why not now? Why not now? to go after all of these people and set things to right. The BVI was the secrecy jurisdiction of choice for customers of the Panama-based law firm Mossack Fonseca, according to an ICIJ analysis of leaked files that formed the basis of the 2016 Panama Papers investigation. Mossack Fonseca created more than 113,000 British Virgin Island companies, outstripping Panama as the most popular tax haven. And as far as Panama goes, yeah, we see what happened uh, how what happened in Panama back in the day when America invaded. Imagine having your money in Panama then. 
all of it got seized by whoever the hell was in charge, and you got nothing. So that's definitely one of the pitfalls of putting your money in a country with all sorts of turmoil and a chance for rebellion all the time or for an invasion by a foreign power if they act out of line. You might lose every last dollar. Just ask George Jung. In 2017, ICIJ also revealed flaws at top-tier law firm Appleby, which has an office in the BVI. Internal reviews found holes in the law firm's paperwork and imperfect knowledge of high-risk customers according to documents obtained by ICIJ as part of the Paradise Papers investigation. So again, if you're a law firm, right, and you're a reputable joint or reputable shop, and you you know, you're you're, uh, people that aren't breaking the law, why do you need an office in the BVI? You do not. You're down there to skirt some laws, find some uh, technicalities, and operate through loopholes. That is what you're doing. Just be honest about it, okay? ICIJ's most recent investigation, the FinCEN files, revealed that some of the world's most profitable banks routinely process money for companies and tax havens who owners are unknown. One in every five suspicious activity reports filed by banks and reviewed as part of the FinCEN files investigation contained a client with an address in the BVI according to an ICIJ analysis. One in five. That is an insane number. An absolutely insane number. So there's obviously a huge problem going on in the BVI. There is obviously a big-time market for people like Jeffrey Epstein, Ghislaine Maxwell, Leon Black, and the rest of them to exploit these loopholes. And every single one of these tax havens, I'm saying every single one of them, needs to be investigated by forensic investigators when it comes to forensic accountants, when it comes to the money. Because, I look, these people, I guarantee you, have money stashed in places that we have not even discussed yet. Other UK tax havens received mixed news this month. Anguilla, a tiny island of 17,000 people, was placed on the European Union's blacklist of countries and territories that failed to meet standards of transparency, fair taxation, and commitments to global norms. Last month, ICIJ reported that they that their officials once had a close relationship with scandal-tainted law firm Mossack Fonseca had slipped further down a separate global transparency index. Wow, that's nice, huh? Very nice, very, very, very nice. The officials had a relationship with Mossack Fonseca, a company that's responsible for all sorts of scumbaggery. So you see how it works? It's, it's just circular. It is circular. These people are all part of the same group, so-called polite society. They're doing a favor for you. You do a favor for me. You stash this money. You launder this money. You wash this money. And we'll all profit at the end and F everybody else. Oh, and by the way, I have a sex trafficking ring going on. If you guys want to come to my island. I mean, is that where we are as a society that this can take place so brazenly that this can take place right underneath our noses and nobody is in jail but the two lowly guards? Come on now, folks. Besides Ghislaine Maxwell and the two jail guards who fell asleep when they were watching Epstein, nobody else has been arrested yet. Now, I do believe it's coming, but let's be real. All of these people should be in jail right now as we speak. In the same EU announcement, European ministers delisted the Cayman Islands, which has a zero corporate tax rate and has welcomed tens of billions of dollars in profits from the U.S., including from brand name companies like Coca-Cola and Pfizer. The territory is the largest enabler of financial secrecy in the world, according to the Nonprofit Tax Justice Network's Financial Secrecy Index. 
for sure. The Cayman Islands is where it's at. That's what I was talking about earlier. That's where all of these people are stashing their money. If you're a scuzzball and you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you more than likely you have a few bucks stashed off the Cayman Islands. It would be nice if a couple of Cayman crocodiles would eat these people, but here we are. Experts and members of the European Parliament expressed disbelief at the decision to give the Cayman Islands a clean bill of health and concern that the use of lists to punish smaller tax havens exempts countries like Switzerland, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. Oh, I agree with that. If we're going to talk about tax havens, we have to discuss Switzerland, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands for sure. What, just because they're in Europe means they're above suspicion? Hell no. Hell no. There are so many corrupt bureaucrats running around places like Switzerland, Luxembourg, and Netherlands, it'll make your head spin. And if you don't think that they have their hands in the cookie jar, you are not paying attention. Blacklists, gray lists, or white lists, lists of any kind, are divisive and counterproductive, said Afton Titus, law professor at the University of Cape Town. This process is less about ensuring global tax transparency and global tax fairness and more about creating a mechanism by which to publicly defend the interests of industrialized and developed countries like the EU countries, Titus told ICIJ. Oh, I don't doubt that either. What, you think like the IMF and all of these other operations really care about the developing world? They don't care. They use these places as tax havens. They use these places, exploit these places, and go on with their merry business. That's how it's always happened. That's how it's always been with so-called polite society. What do you think? Poor people were setting up colonies? They might have been shipped there afterwards, but they weren't benefiting from it, believe, believe me. And it's the same shit now. You see these places like the Cayman Islands and the BVI and all of these other little island nations. They always take the brunt of the conversation when we're talking about tax havens, while places like Switzerland, Luxembourg and the Netherlands aren't really brought up. But I think that all of these places need more oversight. How credible is a tax haven blacklist that includes small countries such as Fiji, Samoa, Trinidad, and Tobago and excludes or exempts some of the world's biggest tax havens at the center of recent major tax scandals highlighted by the Paradise Papers and Panama Papers, said Lillianne Moan, a lecturer at Coventry University in the UK. The blacklist process is yet another example of powerful nations wanting to play judge and jury while at the same time protecting the status quo. And not only protecting the status quo, protecting themselves, right? Protecting their friends, protecting the lawmakers. Because remember, folks, those are the people that are really benefiting from this shit in one way or the other. These lawmakers who make the laws, who create the loopholes, who create a way to backdoor this shit are the ones that are really responsible in the end. My question to you is, are we ever going to hold them responsible? If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. All right, everybody, we'll be back later on and we'll pick it up then. Can you imagine what it would be like to wake up Monday morning excited for work? It's possible. Finding your dream job means finding the right job at the right company based on what's right for your life. Ramit Sethi, New York Times bestselling author, has helped thousands of people find their dream jobs, and I want to show you how you can do it too. Get answers to some of today's hardest career questions. What's changed in the global pandemic? How do you use this time to renegotiate and even work remotely permanently? Are you in the right job at the right company for you based on your current career goals and life needs? Most people aren't. It's hard to find out how the most successful careers are actually built unless you have an inside scoop. 
Find Your Dream Job is Ramit's program that teaches people how to find and land the job of their dreams, as well as negotiate for more pay and great perks like remote work. Proven over 10 years with thousands of students, Find Your Dream Job is a comprehensive system that works no matter what your career goals are. Want to make more money, change industries, work from home, get a promotion, or improve your work-life balance? Find Your Dream Job will show you exactly how to do it. Sign up for more information at iwt.com slash podcast DJ. Happy Honda Days are back at the Norm Reed's Honda Superstore. Don't miss super clearance prices when you shop a super selection of new Honda vehicles and get a super experience. Plus, every new Honda is backed by our exclusive price protection guarantee, which states if you can find the same new Honda for less within five days, Norm Reed's will pay you the difference or buy your vehicle back. Hurry in for super clearance prices, super selection, super experience. It's the Happy Honda Day sales event at the Norm Reeves Honda Superstore. Visit our super award-winning Norm Reeves Honda Superstore locations in Huntington Beach, West Covina, the Irvine Auto Center, and the number one Honda store in the world in the Cerritos Auto Square. Plus, we're now open in Vista. Shop online at normreeves.com. As per global Honda new vehicle sales 2019.